to Travel America RV Center of Comac. This video is an instructional on how you're going to function with your motorhome while you're out on your vacation. Hopefully it's helpful and you have a lot of key points that you can understand if there's anything you don't understand. In your binder you will find my cell phone number or the office contact and I'd be more than happy to help you guys. There's a few things I want to bring to your attention before we get started. Number one, you want to make sure that you put that app on your phone called Copilot. That Copilot app is going to be simply for a motorhome for travel. Do not use Google Maps, do not use Waze. Those apps will not keep you off the parkways and out of tunnels that do not allow you to go through because of propane. And if you need help with the um, specifications, make sure that your app is on before you pick up your motorhome and I can help you with that. Again, no parkways. You do not go on parkways like a truck. The height of it is too high for a parkway. Um, you also have in your motorhome, you'll notice um, we always have detectors. We got smoke, propane, and carbon monoxide. So we're definitely sending you out with the best product out there and also with all the safety precautions covered so that you guys can enjoy your vacation or whatever it is you're doing and hitting that road with safety. You'll notice on this video that there's going to be certain type of timed key boxes for different headings. Um, so if you guys have done this before and you just need to brush up on a certain area such as sewage or components, then just find that noted um, box and then just watch that portion of the video. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Have a great time. And Welcome to Travel America RV Center of Comac. This is our 28 foot Sunseeker rental with outside kitchen. There's a few things I want to show you on this motorhome, interior and exterior, for the operations while you're on your trip. You can always reference the index on this video to help you out while you're, cap you're camping so that you know how to use everything. If you need me, obviously my number is in the binder that I supplied you. But let's get started. This 28-foot sun seeker is equipped with an electric canopy. We're going to go over that operations on the inside. Of course, you always want to make sure that your canopy is out when you're enjoying it and in in the evening and in when you're traveling, obviously. You always want to make a habit of walking around your campground perimeter before you actually put that motorhome in drive. Many times people have accidentally left the awnings extended and they rip them off and it's extremely costly. So you want to make sure that somebody's in charge before that goes in drive, somebody's done a walk around. That'll save you a lot of headache and a lot of money. On the side of this coach, we have a propane compartment which is filled with propane so you will not have to use that. You will see compartments randomly across this side of the coach. They're storage compartments. If you notice, there's a key lock. On your keys, you'll notice a 751 silver key. This key is universal to all the compartments, so they will unlock them. Make sure you lock your compartments before you travel. If we move down on the coach, you'll find that there's outside outlets. These outlets are functionable when you're plugged in at the campground or when the generator is on. You can use your appliances and certain type of things on the outside when you're enjoying the awning. Now I want to bring to your attention this compartment door. Do you notice how this compartment door swings down? It's storage, but it swings down. This compartment door, if not locked with your key, will bounce open when you're traveling and you will rip it off completely. So that's why you'll notice a yellow label reminding you to please lock this compartment. This compartment full, um, opens down as well, but it's not as close to the ground. So that one you probably will not rip off. You'll notice that you have exterior storage. It goes straight through the other side. That's perfect for chairs and uh, carpet, fishing poles, golf clubs, things like that. So you could store that in this compartment. If you notice that um, all these compartments are um, uh, plastic, so if you had to wipe it out or rinse it out if something spilled, not a problem. This motorhome is equipped with a kitchen. Of course, we have a kitchen on the inside. Many people ask me that. This is a tailgate kitchen, which means that when you're outside, your guests can use the refrigerator. This refrigerator is a cooling refrigerator. It is not a refrigerator to put meat in, drinks only. The refrigerator will cool only when plugged into electric or when it senses the generator. So make sure that if you stock this with drinks, realize they're not going to be cold unless you've had an electric um, source already um, cooling it. Your TV out here 
is um, DVD, which you'll find behind it. And also it is Direct TV if your motorhome is equipped with Direct TV service. The Direct TV on this particular television, you have to source the TV to TV and it's got to be on zero three in order for it to see the receiver on the inside of the coach. Okay, we're going to go to the next thing. You got a sink. The sink out here will only work when you put the water pump on and we're going to get to that on the inside. So the water pump on and then you can use the sink outside when you're camping and then you have various cabinets. Let's go to the back. You'll notice there's a ladder. The ladder is not usable on a rental. No, no, no. We keep the kids off. We keep people off the roof from lounging. It is not a recreational space. That ladder is there for service only, and it's been modified to keep your family and your friends safe. You notice that there's a hitch down below. Our hitches are locked unless you tell us that you need a bike rack. If you need a bike rack, I rent them, $65, but you have to definitely reserve that in advance. If you're gonna bring your own bike carrier, please bring it the day of pickup, because there is a hitch lock attached, and you will not be able to get that hitch lock off at your house. We're gonna discuss a few things on what you're gonna to need to hook this motorhome at, up at the campground. You're gonna need three things. Electric, sewer, water. Really simple. By the first time you hook it up, it may take a little time for you to do it. Second time, you could probably do it with one eye open. We're gonna notice, you're gonna notice this hatch. This is your electric input. That's what it's gonna look like. You will notice in your camp, compartment there's an extension cord that looks like this this end attaches into there that is at the campground now if you notice this end has 30 amp prong see that prong that's a 30 amp service that is going to attach to the campground post i am going to give you an adapter what is this adapter for very simply it's going to attach the same way your extension cord does. You stick it in and you turn it in and you lock it on on the little ring. Notice this is 110. The only time you use this is when you go home from my place and connect a house extension cord to here. That is gonna give you electric for the refrigerator until you're ready to leave on your trip. You do not ever, ever, ever run a house extension cord to a motorhome to run roof air conditioning. You will cause all types of popping of breakers and you definitely, if you did that, you could cause some internal damage to the central air unit. So you wanna make sure that when you connect a go, um, an extension cord to here at home, it's strictly to take the motorhome off propane and on electric for your fridge, whether it's overnight until you're ready to leave or for a few hours. Once you disconnect this at your house, you're going to place it in your storage compartment. Your extension cord. You're going to bring this with you. Do not bring a house extension with you. This extension cord goes into any compartment you choose. This way we have that. Okay. Um, next thing. Water. You notice you have an inlet like this. It says water hose here. Well, that makes it real simple. So your garden hose goes here at the campground. What does that do? That gives you unlimited water source coming from their water spout. So you're gonna take a garden hose that I'm going to give you. Garden hose is gonna look like this. Okay, it's like home. So this side is gonna to go to the spout at the campground or at your relative's house. You will notice I gave you a water regulator. Water regulator must go onto your hose first. You'll screw it on. And then you'll take your water hose and you'll screw it in here. Why do we use this water regulator? Very simply, a water regulator, a motorhome has plumbing in it. It's 60 PSI pressure maximum before you start loosening the plumbing connections. We don't need that. So when you use this water regulator, she does an automatic reduction from whatever the water pressure is at the campground down to 60. Most campgrounds are various. They're 60, they're 100, they're 80. So you wanna make sure to protect our plumbing, you use this water regulator. After you're done with that, this goes then in one of your compartments. Make sure you bring it with you. 
Okay, the next plumbing question is filling our tank. Inside, we're gonna discuss a water, tump, uh, water pump function. This is your water tank, okay? In order to fill this easily, you'll take your water hose off the motorhome, you'll screw this on, you'll stick this in as a fill hose, and you'll fill the, this tank. This tank is not this. This is direct. This is working off of a storage tank in the motorhome while you're traveling or if you're dry camping such as NASCAR, Poconos, Hither Hills, where they don't have water connections for your hose. This will probably overflow, that's fine. Just put the cap back on. As you drive, you may see some, some drippage, that's completely fine. Make sure that you put this in your compartment. Sewer, really, really simple. It's not like the RV movie where you see it squirting up like the fountain. It's not a fountain, it's gravity drop. So of course we open up the compartment, you'll see a sewer hose that I have provided you. It is attached to the motorhome for your easy use, okay? You'll notice I have two pull valves, toilet and gray. The definitions of those is the black on your monitor panel that we're gonna discuss displays what's in the toilet side of the tank. Your gray is dirty sink and shower water. That's why it's called gray. So reference it in your thinking, like soapy color is gray. That's what it means. So there's two different things we want to talk about. We want to talk about straight dumping where we're not connected to the campground, right? So say you're camping and you're not going to have hookups, but you got to dump on the way out or you have to dump before you come back to me. Make sure you dump before you come back. So what? it's easy. We're going to, this will be on off, which is always good. So we're gonna stick this into their septic hole. You will see it at the campground. It looks like a little hole in the ground, like for a cesspool. You're going to flip the lever to open on this one. If your sewer hose looks like this, this is the function. Now, you see gray and toilet valves, right? They're pull valves, that's all that they are. They just pull open, push closed. In order to dump one time only, you're gonna pull the toilet one first. You'll hear it going through the hose. That's the waste side. Once you start, stop hearing the water flow, you're gonna close the toilet valve. That means push it in. The, the last and final step is pulling the gray valve open. We do that because that's your sink and shower water. That's going to rinse this hose out of all that gross stuff that was in the toilet side. So you pull that, you'll hear her rinsing. You hear her rinsing. It's good to give this a little dip down Okay, so if you notice that this is a valve that moves. So if you dip it down at the end, whatever's left in that um, connector will come out the hose. Then we close the gray. Now she's empty. Now, second step. What happens if we connect at a campground? What do I do, Suzanne? Very simply. You're going to put the sewer hose into their septic hole. You're going to pull the gray valve completely wide open and leave it open. That's going to give you constant disposal of kitchen sink and shower. So this way it goes down the drain and out the hose. The toilet valve remains closed until your monitor panel that we're going to discuss on black shows two thirds to full. When it lights up two thirds to full, which you're going to make a habit of checking it every day, someone that's elected to do this job is going to come out here and pull the toilet valve. Everything's gonna come out the toilet down into this valve. When you hear the water flow stop, you're gonna push this back in and you're gonna go into the bathroom. Under the bathroom sink, you will find a pouch of toilet chemical, little pouches. You're gonna take one little blue pouch and flush it down the toilet bowl. What does that do? That pouch deodorizes so you don't smell anything in that toilet tank, starting over, and it also um, aids in eating the toilet paper that you're using. Um, so that's the procedure for sewer. If there's any questions, there are labels here that give you a little bit more reference, um, or you can always go to the index on sanitation and review this one more time. Okay, on this motorhome, we have another step. Do you notice this valve down below? This is an extra valve. Above it, it has a label that says outside kitchen sink, okay? That valve, you do not have to empty. That can be done here because it's just soapy water. But if you're gonna go on an extended trip and you gotta empty this, you're just gonna open these two flaps 
and pull the cap off. If I can, ooh, you're gonna pull the cap off. It's sink water. That's all that it is from the kitchen outside. You would pull this valve and it would empty the sink water. So you would have to disconnect this and put the hose here, or you can just let it run out on the ground because all it is is just whatever went down your kitchen sink. You're gonna put this valve back in. If I can get it back in. And then you'll close these flaps and that will um, hold the cap tight for travel. All right, so that's easy. In this compartment, you're gonna find little blocks, leveling blocks. This, these motorhomes are equipped with scissor jacks that are down on the bottom. If you notice, this is a scissor jack. That's a stabilizing jack. So what you want to do is you want to bring a, um, a power drill that maybe has a connection on it that brings them down a little bit easier than using the hand crank that we provided you. You want to put one of these or two of these under the foot of the jack and then bring it down so this way it sits level. If you get to a campground and you don't need those, then you don't use these. They're not mandatory, they're just optional. Cable connection. This motorhome has um, means of being hooked up to cable park TV. There's a coax cable that's located in the same compartment as your extension cord. You can connect it here, connect it to their campground post for cable. And then inside on the TV, you would have to go to um, the each TV to the TV input mode, and then you would have to drop it down to do an auto scan on cable. When you do that auto scan, I'm gonna go over that with you, there's two options, air, which is the antenna in the sky on the roof, and cable, which is their post. If you do not scan their post, you will not get any television from that input. You have another connection, right? This looks like the water connection that we did for the hose. It is not. This is not a water connection. This is a sewer flush. Do not touch this inlet. You do not need to use that. That is for service only. As we're getting to the end of the exterior, you'll notice all these mirrors are foldable. So if you do find yourself going on the ferry, um, they may ask you to fold the mirrors in and they will fold. There is a spare tire up underneath this motorhome in the rear. So you have roadside assistance through Ford, Arroyo documentation is in that binder that I've provided. So where would they find that? Up underneath the back of the coach. They will then come and change out the tire for you. Hey everybody, it's interior review time. Let's go in. In this coach, you will notice a few things. There's a control panel here. This control panel is really what you're gonna use to function a lot of the items in this motorhome other than the rear slide out room. Let's start first, generator. When we start a generator, we have to prime a generator down. So that puts fuel in the tank. So you'll hold it till the red light comes on. Then we'll hold it and then she'll start. The rule of thumb with a motorhome generator is you will not have electric for 40 seconds. What's your indicator you have electric? You will see your microwave clock beep and come on on lights. That's about 40 seconds. So the question is going to be while we're waiting for that, can I run my generator while I drive? The answer is yes. You cannot run it 24 hours a day. I would say run it for about three, four hours if you need to run the roof air conditioning or use the electrical outlets or the microwave. Your TVs and your DVDs in this coach are 12 volt. You do not need the generator on. So if you're fine with having the kids have the screens open for ventilation, save yourself on the generator because it does feed off your main fuel tank. It will burn about a gallon every five hours. We know it's not a lot, but it also um, affects your, um, your mileage per gallon. Okay, so as you notice, this came on, right? So that means we have electric. You'll find in a motorhome that all your lighting on your ceiling are LEDs. So that means it does not tell you if it is, if your electric is on. So when you turn the generator on and you see that, you know it's on. When you plug in your extension cord at the campground, this is the first place you check. If it's beeping, then you know you have electric. If it is not on, there's a few things that have happened. A, you've popped the breaker on the post outside at the campgrounds. Why? Because nine out of 10 times you didn't shut your air conditioning off before you shut off the generator. So if you have those issues, call me. It's probably easier for me to walk you through them individually. Okay, so that's all. I'm gonna leave that on for now. 
These are your gauges. These gauges tell you what's in those tanks that we reviewed outside. You'll find that your galley button is the first button. That tells you how much dirty water is in that outside kitchen sink. Gray tells you how much dirty sink and shower water is in that gray valve. Black tells you how much is in that toilet valve. And that again is your toilet and your bathroom sink. So if you're going to be camping NASCAR, Dover, Penn State, and you're brushing your teeth, you may want to brush your teeth in the kitchen because if you let the bathroom sink run, it's going to fill up that toilet tank much quicker. Fresh water, okay? So you have, you want to count the buttons because we all get confused. Gray, um, galley, gray, black, fresh. Fresh water, once this is filled, will be full. That's going to show you how much fresh water capacity remains in the motorhome. You want to make it a habit of refilling the water tank before you leave the campground so that you have water in your um, travel tank when you're traveling. And then last but not least is your propane gas. LPG, you'll find either they're gonna read full, they're gonna read uh, two thirds. That's more than enough propane to function on your trip. The propane is used for the oven and the stove, hot water on propane, and your refrigerator while you're traveling without any kind of uh, electric source. All right, what are these buttons? These obviously are your lights. Arctic we don't use, that's for winter. Water pump. Now remember we discussed how we filled the water tank with the cap outside? And that water tank then is under this fresh button. Well, in order to get water pressure out of the tank while you're traveling, sink, shower, toilet, you have to turn the water pump on. If you turn the water pump on, you'll get pumping pressure inside the coach. Remember to shut this off when, it's, when you're done. Why do we shut it off? Because if you end up going dry on your water tank, you'll burn out the water pump. So pump on, use it, pump off. Hot water. This is hot water, water heater. We can heat on electric, we can heat on gas. We recommend that you heat on electric. So when you're plugged in at a campground, you're gonna turn it on and you're gonna leave it on. This way you have hot water for the whole trip. If, when do we use propane hot water, you'll ask me. Well, say you go to Hither Hills and they allow you to run your generator a certain amount of hours for the day, and especially in the evening, they'll make you run, they'll make you shut off your generator for um, noise. What you want to do in order to get hot water for a shower late at night, if you're not going to go to their bathrooms, if they're not open, you're going to put the hot water heater on on gas. You're going to wait 10 minutes. It's going to heat. You're going to take a shower. Then you're going to shut it off. So that allows you in this coach, Sunseeker, 28 footer, to have hot water on gas or electric. This is your slide out room button for this room. See this room? The slide out room button operates at this room only. Before we use the slide out room button, generator on or being plugged at a campground. You must have electric to move this room without any interruption. So generator's on. If we press this to out, see how it's extending? Nobody's sitting on that room when it's extending. This is not an amusement toy. It is weighted. So open your room fully. Do not open your room half because there is a gasket that must seal so that if it rains, you don't get any water in the coach. The exterior slide out room, it's located here. Bedroom slide, in and out. You'll extend this one second and you must remember to have the motor of the RV off. Not the generator, the engine has to be off for these rooms to move. Last but not least is you'll see a switch in certain motorhomes, right? There is a light that is mounted in the side wall near your sewer components. This will give you a flashlight outside if you get into a campground to hook up in the evening when it's dark. Gives you some lighting. Just make sure you shut that off at night so it doesn't glare in your neighbor's bedroom window. The appliances, very simply. Every motorhome is equipped with a refrigerator freezer. On this particular coach, on the 28 footers, you'll notice they're usually Dometic. You'll see a couple buttons. You'll see on and off. You'll see auto and you'll see gas. The motorhome refrigerator will be set on auto when you pick up from me, leave it that way. If you notice that there's a level, these refrigerators should not be functioned on any heavy inclines, front or back. 
So try to use this level as a as a um, visual on where the bubble is. If the bubble is in the middle, good. If the bubble's half in and half out, it's still good. It just can't be completely out of that middle line. Freezer's on top, refrigerator's on the bottom. If you notice this fin in the back, try not to overload in front of the fin. That's your cooling fin. It needs air circulation to keep your refrigerator cold. So watch how you pack the refrigerator. Next appliance is your microwave. Microwave can be used with the generator on or being plugged in. Never use this microwave with the roof air conditioning running. You will pop a breaker. So if you need to use the microwave for po uh, popcorn or what have you, you want to shut the air off in the bedroom, use your, uh, use your microwave, then turn the air back on. This is your stove top. You'll notice a glass cover. This is for extra counter space. Lift the glass before we light the stove. Many people have figured, oh, this must be an electric top, like at home, and then they crack the glass. So you want to lift the glass to light the stove. You'll notice that there's a sparker knob here. It's all in different directions. That's okay. These all should be on off. If any of you have uh, toddlers or younger children that touch things, you can, for your safety, pull these off and put them in the kitchen drawer. So this way they're not able to turn the knobs when you least expect it. So, and then they then simply, simply just slip right back on. You want to make sure it's set in the off position, slip it back on. How do we light the stove top real easy? Turn one and then spark it. If it's having a problem sparking, use a barbecue lighter. It goes real fast that way. And then you shut it down. So each one is highlighted to which burner it controls. Your oven, in the trick in uh, lighting an oven, you need a, a barbecue lighter. If you notice in the oven, there's a burner at the way back of the oven. In order to light that with a barbecue lighter, you must turn the knob on pilot on, correct? So pilot on, push it in, light it. This oven will not light if that knob is not pushed in and lit at the same time. It allows the release of the gas. And then you turn it up and when you're done, just put it back to off. This is your DVD player. This functions on the front, on the front TV only. This also acts as a radio inside outside. So you have um, awning speakers that are connected to this. This is also Bluetooth pairable. You wanna go on to YouTube you want to type in Jensen RV radio or Jensen radio, you'll see the picture and it'll show you how to pair it. It's just easier that way. A speakers is inside for your radio here. Okay. B speakers outside. Okay. C speakers is a dummy uh, switch. There's nothing on that. The DVD onto the television. You mode this to HDMI one, put your DVD in there, turn on your television and you should have it. If you don't know what input it is, you'll find your remote usually in this bag. You'll match up the remote to the TV. There's a Furion in here, there may be a different one in the back. So in order to remove, in order to do your sources, you hit source button, okay? That's your input, you'll find See, JM, JWM6A, that's going to control this. That's for your DVD. We're going to get to direct TV at the end of this film because that takes a little bit longer. So that's your TV in the front. Remember when we spoke about hooking to cable at the park? Okay. So what you would have to do is you would source this TV, back up to TV, hit OK. It's got TV already. But if it didn't have TV, because there's an um, antenna on the roof, you would then go to menu. See this menu button? Hit menu. We're going to scroll all the way over to channel. You see how it says air? If you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're not plugged to park cable, you'll set it to air, hit it to auto scan, hit OK. That will scan everything in a high def radius. If you're connected to the cable, park cable, you will make sure that this setting is switched to cable. You'll go down to auto scan and scan the TV off their cable line. You must do this on every TV individually, okay? It's individual TVs. That's the process. We're going to get to direct TV when we're done.
on the end of the film. Last but not least, this motorhome is equipped with a TV in the back. It's a Furion, so it will use the same remote. If you pull this TV open by the handle, you will find storage behind there, as well as a DVD slot here built into the television. It's going to be the same setting. You'll look for um, TV and then um, the component audio. Find it once you load your DVD in. If you just keep switching it on input, you'll figure out which one it's set to. Air conditioning. The air conditioning will not work without electric. That means you need the generator on when you're driving or if you're dry camping or staying in a Walmart or crack a barrel overnight, which is free camping, by the way. Um, or you're plugged in at a campground. So what do we do? If we come around here on this Dometic air conditioning thermostat and we tap it, you notice it says off because it illuminates. Perfect. If we mode it, that's the fan. You always want to have the fan on auto. If you find it's hot and humid like it is today, you want to put your fan on high. These motorhomes tend to get condensation dripping from the air conditioning vents there in the kitchen. That's because it needs a high fan in order to cool down your compressor. So keep it on high if it's hot and humid. If it's in the evening when you're sleeping, leave it on auto. Now, that's the fan. If we switch it to cool, it looks like the snowflake, you'll adjust your temperatures. If we switch it to furnace, that's heat through the floor. And then we tap it one more time, it shuts it off. Remember what I told you. You must shut your air conditioning off before you shut off the generator or before you unplug at the campground. If you do not do this, you will be calling me because you will be popping breakers at both locations if that's the case. So make a habit, air conditioning off, then shut off the electric. Now, come back here one more time. I want to show you something. If somebody before you had used this, okay, and let's go to this, and they change it to Celsius, it's 20, right? Just tap these two together, and it changes it back to the numbers that we understand. Let me shut this back off. Okay. You gotta do fuses and breakers yes. too. Mm -hmm. Okay, switches, light switches, light switches. This works a light at night, so if you got to get up to the bathroom, you can turn that on. And then this switch works your ceiling lights in the bedroom as well. Now, we want to open up this room so I could show you where your fuse breaker is. Your fuses are under the face of this bed on this model. So if we're going to open this up, make sure you always check what's on the side of you so that you don't knock into a tree with somebody's car. So always want to check. Okay, so we're gonna open that up. We don't have to open it all the way. If you notice at the face of this bed, on this model, you have a fuse panel. That's where your breakers are gonna be and your fuse panel uh, for your fuses. It's very rare that you blow a fuse. Um, so in the glove box in the Ford cab, you will find a bag of extra blade fuses just in case you need them. Breakers are easy reset like at home. Also, you'll notice under the front of this bed, you have drawers. So there's some drawers hidden in here that you wouldn't know were under there for like shoes or, or extra things. You notice also that there's a mattress cover on this bed. There's a new mattress cover put on every time it goes out. So there's no need to purchase one. Um, your bedding back here is queen. So you can use queen sheets like you do at home. Hidden beds. First of all, let's open up this room so we can explore the beds a little differently. So in this coach, you're gonna have sleeping for eight or six. The top bed up here is a bunk. This bunk has got a uh, support block, um, uh, has I guess a support board we could call it. That fits in here. This one has got a little, um, some of them have the little screen that seat belts from side to side so that the kids don't roll out. So some of these coaches will have it, some will not have it. The ladder that's there is strictly storage placement. The kids do not climb up in that area. The ladder then comes out. And then it attaches here. The kids can go up and down. No children traveling in this overhead loft while in motion. It's strictly for sleeping or stationary, okay? So everybody must be in seat belts. You'll find two seat belts here on this seat, 
and child loops, and you'll find two to three seat belts hidden underneath the sofa. So before you leave, make sure you put the ladder back where you found it so it doesn't rattle around. And this cushion then will go back up into this area. You'll find little storage cubbies, um, electric hook up here. This is a bed. You simply lift it up from here and pull it down flat. That's all that you do. Up and then down. To put it back up, you just go that way. If you look under here, you'll see the seat belts. You can fish the seat belts up through here if you need them. This bed, easy. You're gonna lift these cushions up separately, take them off. You're gonna unlock the table. The table's gonna lower onto this ledge. You're gonna use this cushion and that cushion here, like a puzzle. It's gonna go straight across. In the morning, when you bring the table back up, make sure it's locked in so it doesn't come down on your kid's legs or whoever's sitting there. And obviously the main bed is in the back and that's your queen. So my suggestion for sheets are this, queen fitted, queen flats, up there, there, and there. Queen, just tuck them in. There's no sense. They're never going to fit right. So you might as well just use flats. That's what I suggest. That's, that's where our beds are. Okay, plumbing. We, we're going to discuss a few things as far as how you use your water. Remember how we talked about the garden hose and the fill cap? Garden hose on at the campground will give you pressure. All you have to do is turn on the water at the spigot and open up your faucets. You have water pressure in the shower, in the toilet, in the bathroom, in the kitchen. If you're using that water tank like we discussed earlier in the video, just make sure the water pump is, the water pump is on, use your water, then shut it off. This is hot and cold here in your sink. Your shower, hot and cold like at home or in a boat. In the bathroom, hot and cold on the sink, and you got a push pedal for flushing the toilet. That is a rinser to rinse the toilet out. Not everyone has that. That will only work when you're hitting the, uh, the flush pedal down. You could swing and spray inside the toilet and clean it up. Motorhome like this is equipped with air conditioning. We call it Motorhome Central. You notice this is up on the ceiling. There is a, a fin that opens and closes. When it's hot and humid like it is on a day like today and the air conditioning's on, leave this on. This allows the air to escape from your roof and not be closed up and freeze your compressor. If it freezes your compressor because you left this closed on a humid day, you're not gonna have air conditioning until it defrosts and that could be a lengthy period of time. Hot and humid, leave it open. At nighttime when you sleep, you could close it. Now you'll notice central air vents. These are round vents scattered throughout the vehicle. You could close them individually. So if it's too not cold enough in one section, close some of the vents to force the air in the other locations. Central air is through the vents. This is your main air for drop. So during the day, this is open. If it's humid, at nighttime, it'll uh, scatter the air in both sections. So if you have this uh, area closed off for sleeping, they'll still get air conditioning up in this direction. Remember what I'm telling you. I'm going to say this again. Shut off your air conditioning before you shut off your generator or unplug. Probably the top number one problem that renters um, face is because they don't do that. So eliminate all kinds of problems and um, follow my instructions. Last but not least, as far as in the coach itself, is your direct TV. If you're equipped with direct TV, not everybody is, but if you notice you have a receiver box in this area, that means you do have direct TV. So for the people that have that, this is for you. The first thing we're gonna do for direct TV is A, we're gonna turn on the TV. B, if it has a wine guard switch like this, you're gonna make sure it's on. There is a couple of these models that I have that does not have a wine guard switch on. It actually has a module box that has a light on it that is behind the receiver laying there. If you jump up on the dinette and look, it's a module and it's got an on and off. If the green light is on, that means it's on. That's how it turns on that particular satellite. So it's one or the other. The next thing is, is you're gonna source this to direct TV. Hit OK. Third step, your receiver has a flap with a red button. You're gonna reset 
that red button when you're stopped. That's gonna refresh your receiver from the last location. Now, you will see this come up on the screen. It's gonna take three to four minutes to lock on. If for some reason you're in a very wooded area, a lot of trees in the west, doesn't work well with that. Um, so what's gonna happen is you may get signal loss. You could reboot the system again. If you get signal loss a second time, you're out of luck on the direct TV. You'll have to use high def scan or cable scan at the campgrounds. Um, it's working off a satellite system, so we have no control over that. And um, if you can get it on, great. So we're gonna let it queue up and see if we could try to get some type of signal going here while we discuss the cab. Ford key. You have a screen here. The screen, you have, you'll have two different screens in these models, either in the dash or above here. If it's above here, that's your rear and side camera system. If it's only here, that also acts as your radio and your rear and car camera um, system. So you'll see that on right turn, left turn will come in here. Also reverse. Never trust a camera backing up. Always have human eyes back there. You never know if there's any low-lying trees, basketball net, things that you can't say until you go boom. We don't want to go boom. We want to make sure that somebody's watching. Um, you'll notice that you have charging ports, charging ports in here as well. Air conditioning's like your car. Headlights are always on auto, so they're on only at um, nighttime, daytime running lights. Your uh, mirrors, you'll see left and right over there. That tilts your top glass, left or right. Your right side, left side. The bottom glass is affixed, so it does not move. If you're having a problem with the top glass on either side, it's not moving properly, you could just simply uh, push it a little bit with your hand, and it's completely, it's just on a, um, a mirror pivot. Um, the glass is also heated for winter time. So you'll notice a button above the mirrors. It says on and off. That's for heated glass only. That does not turn on your mirrors. Um, again, you have cruise, cruise control in your steering wheel. So you'll know how to use that. In your glove box, you'll find your Ford manual in here, as well as those fuses that I told you that you'll probably never use. Um, you always, in a motorhome rental, want to bring a toolbox. Um, not that we're into anticipating any kind of uh, issue, but you always want to have duct tape, electrical tape, pliers, uh, utility blade, um, screwdrivers, things like that. Always have a little toolbox put aside because you never know if there's something that you have to attach or secure. It is a motorhome. It is moving. That means when it's moving, things jiggle around and could get loose. Okay, so we're at this step, one of two. Like I said, it's probably a two to three minute process. Once a, uh, a bar shows up on the bottom and starts to fill in with a green color, then you know that the satellite has locked on to her source. So that's the bar you want to see. When you see that bar and she's filling in, then we're almost there. So it takes her a little while, so let her do that. If you notice as you're hearing a squiggly, like a uh, pivoting sound above us, that's the satellite on, moving, looking. If you find that you're not using a satellite and you left it on by accident and you're hearing that, you simply go to that wine guard switch and just shut it off. See this bar? Let's see if we could try to get green. I don't always get um, a lock on position here in the parking lot, but I guess we are. So it's green, which is good. You wanna go 100% um, until she's completely got all of her satellite information acquired. Once she goes 100%, the screen will black out for about a second. Leave it alone. Do not touch it. Leave her, let her finish her process. She'll come back up. She'll say um, that she's uh, getting all your scheduling list put together. And then shortly after that, you'll have television. So when she gets to that point, once she goes 100%, now say we're driving, it's an in motion. So just leave the satellite switch on and hopefully she won't do any uh, like major pixelating when you're driving. Um, it is a satellite, there's nothing we can do with that. If we're in a campground and you get this on, the last step you're gonna do after you get live television is shut the wine guard switch off. That will lock the satellite in that position so every time you turn the TV off and on, 
it's on. You don't have to go through this process each time. So she's rebuilding your list, like I told you. And then shortly after that, Direct TV service will be on. If it comes up with a code that says refresh, um, just call me and I'll hit you with a signal to refresh it. Um, we find that the refreshes come up when people don't use them. So I will make sure that I've checked it here to make sure it's refreshed. But if you find that you're out on a long trip and you have not used it and you get this, don't call them, call me and I'll hit you with a signal. So after that, you have TV. Okay folks, hopefully you got a lot of information from me. I know it's a lot of information, but what's nice about it is you can check this video as many times as you like. If you do need me, my cell phone and office number are in that binder, but the video sometimes gives you a little quick reference in case it's late at night and I'm sleeping because I sleep. So with that said, you'll find everything, like I said, it's all working, the generator plugged in, hopefully you got all that information you need. And remember again, a few things, awning out, use it, awning in when we sleep, awning in when we drive, Room out, rooms in when we drive. We cannot drive with these rooms expanded. So with that said guys, go have a good time. It's all about building family memories. I'm here for you whenever you need me. And again, the video is at your fingertips. Have a great time.